What's up guys, it's Lionel the Builder back again with another video and I was just about to go live and then I said, you know what, let me just make this a normal video. When I go live, I end up up here for like three hours and I don't think I have the time today to do that, but I will work live. I think I can do this and turn this into kind of like a debugging tutorial. There's one specific task that I'm trying to do and I'm gonna show you guys how, to, how I work and I know I'm gonna use ChatGPT this time around. I don't always use ChatGPT. Y'all know I'm making it to make a point to get masterful with coding, but for this specific thing, um, I, I, I'm gonna need some Jippity help. So as you can see here, my personnel table, this is my personal table for this. Oh, this is a, a project management um, app, by the way, that, that we're building for ship repair. And so my personnel table is working. Now, when you go to projects and you click on a project, okay, work items, everything's cool over here. Personnel, it's not loading here, which we're gonna have to deal with that later. But more importantly, when you go to project team, we got nothing. Um, there's an error loading the project team data, failed to fetch personnel data. Now, my thing is, if it works, the personnel table is working here, and it even shows the assignment of like which, which of the projects the personnel are assigned to. So if you go here, personnel, you see that me or Isaiah, uh, excuse me, it both of these actually are assigned here. So we got a ship filter, fitter, and a welder assigned here. So we need to get that to also pop up here. Now, I'm gonna look at this component. What I'm gonna try to do, but before my way of doing this was going to be to um, write a hook for the project, a, a hook, let me think, let me think here. So the, the way that we were gonna do this was going to be a hook fetching the personnel by work item. Um, because as you can see, we already have the person, well, at least here it tells you oh no so it's not really fetching the work item personnel properly yet but it does i was looking at my um my bad maybe this should have been alive all right this is unscripted okay so it's gonna be a little rambly but um looking at my component tree here let's clear out the errors um, refresh to see if we are getting any errors. Oh, my bad. I forgot that. Um, I need to fix that too. When you refresh, you should not have to re-log. That's another um, state issue that I need to fix. Instead of refreshing, I have to just click like that. Okay, and we got 404 not found for something. In here. What is that? Connection users oh these are other other users hmm. not sure what that's about but i'm gonna clear it we'll we'll figure that out later um i'm gonna go into react components here and see my personnel table and what how the hook is doing there how it is fetching this information here it is my props i mean um, rendered by personnel, so the prop, whoops. We can actually do like that. Okay, here's a here's our fetch personnel hook. And we can see that in here we have three personnel. That is what this is, right? So I might as well use this hook over there since this is pretty much proving that it's working properly. Um, yep, it's showing that, well, that's me as the current user, but I want to use the one that has all. Maybe personnel table might be a better representation of that. Personnel tables, props. So the hook, yeah. I wish you said the name of the hook right there. Rendered by the personnel page. And then our personnel, you see all of our information here. I got my badge number, when it was created, the email, 
um, the projects that I'm assigned to, the rate, my role, tenant ID, um, both of them actually, all of my, <clears throat> and then in here, work item. But it's super nested though. It goes from, pers it's the, oh, that's my little, I got one of those ADHD timers. I love this thing, man. Anyway, um, it's the user document, and then it's going to the tenant profile, which is a sub collection on the user document, and then the personnel information for each tenant profile. That's this right here. I hope you guys can see that. And that's um, then all of our information is in here. Now. How do I get that? I need to look at my. I guess I'll switch. Let me switch over so you guys can see what I'm doing over here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, if I go here and click this, nope, this, and then that. Okay, so my. Um, I should have put both screens in one screen because i'm i need to also look at the other one anyway um if i look at my personnel table right look at my personnel table and so my personal table i'm using use fetch personnel by work item with the work item id and that's filling in the personnel table. So at least I know use fetch personnel by work item is working. So maybe I can use that within my project team. Let me close these out, clean this up a little bit. Oh, here's project team. All right, so in project team, which is not working, let's, hold on, let's go back. Let's go back over there. I might have to edit this one a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, so over here, when we go to projects, click on the project. Then we click project team. There is an error loading the project team data. Fail to fetch personnel data. Please try again. All right, let's shuffle back over here and find where that error is so I can kind of get a get a idea of where it's it's happening. There was an error loading to, there was an error loading to project team data, failed to fetch personnel data. So where is that? Fails to fetch personnel data. That's right here. So that is happening within the fetch personnel hook. If tenant ID or project ID, okay, so we know that it's not that set loading to true const. Then we do a query of the collection group where tenant ID equals current user tenant ID or where projects array contains project ID await. Then we're getting the docs fetch personnel snapshot. Okay. Assuming the document ID is the personnel UID. Wait a minute. Is the document ID the doc? Yeah, actually it is. Spread the entire document data as a personal data. Okay. Oh, I could inspect to see. Yeah, that's what we should do, right? Let's go back. Wait. Yeah, because since we know this is where it's messing up at. Let's go back yonder to the other screen. And inspect in here to see what is the state what is the state of our hook and if the same way that we were able to look at the fetch personnel within the personnel table let's see what it's looking like over here because my theory my what i'm thinking is that if it's broken and if it's not working i'm just going to try and take that personal table and implement it into here just for now so that i can move on to the other things within this project that that I need to do a temporary fix, if you will, until I could, I will have like a long lasting one. 
All right, so if we go to components and if I, I think if you click this one, it'll like take you straight to, well, I just need to go to project team, right? What we got? Okay, here, here's our props right here, matter of fact. Um, this is rendered by project team, project page. Oh, so that's a, the top is the theme, then the alerts, then the project team. Oh, and clicking that takes you to that component. Oh, cool. I didn't know. I didn't even, even know that. All right, our context here, it's showing the current user. It even shows all users. So I know that my users are available here, right? Wait, why is props empty? Hmm. This is actually something I'm gonna go ahead. Cause shouldn't props, just like with the personal table, props had this information filled in. Hooks should mean that it's still available, right? So this is something I'm gonna act like this isn't a video. And this is literally what I would do. I'm gonna screenshot this. I'm gonna go over to ChatGPT in the um the one that I made specifically to help me with this project, right? I'm going to send that screenshot and I'm going to say, why is my props uh, uh, empty, but the hooks have information? You know what I'm saying? In my, um, in my, whoa, I don't want to scream. You don't want to scream at me. In my project team um, component, on this page, I'm getting an error where the use effect hook is is attempting to fetch the personnel related uh, to this project, right? Is it a project? Yeah, here's a project. Yeah, the project team. There's an error loading the project team data. Fail to fetch personnel data. I'll just. Instead of typing all that, why don't we just do this? With the error of, boom. And then let's go ahead and show it the code. On this component, here's the code. Wham. And then I'm gonna say, also, I'm gonna say, um. but as, but as you can see in the screenshot, my uh, hook, my context for all users and current users is filled. My hook uh, for context of all users and current users is filled. So how can I get that to render properly similar to how my personnel table component is working properly in the other page now i don't know if if it can handle me dropping that in there but i'm gonna also just drop in there this one here can i use the same personnel table on this project team um part of the project to be able to see what personnel are assigned to this specific, is it a work item? To this specific, okay, here's the work items. So this is more so just with the project, just with the project, project. I think that's good enough, I think so. <sighs> See, so this is where if it was live, we could talk, we could, you know, play some music, we could do other stuff while we're waiting. Um, if y'all didn't get a good look at my uh, timer here, as, as you could probably tell, I have ADHD. And so what happens when you have that is that it's hard for us to work long spurts, like long out, you know, as, as developers, we have to work, um, and I know like it's not like everybody has ADHD, so I'm speaking to a very small amount of the following here. But if you do have it or if you know anyone who has it, it's very, very hard for us to sit down for like five hours, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours 
and work on something. No matter how important it is, it doesn't matter. We usually will get caught up, distracted, playing video games, doing something else and like have a very hard time until it's two hours left till your project is due. But that's when our superpowers lock in and we're literally unstoppable. We can do anything. We're geniuses. If you know people with, it's almost like we have too much um, energy or like too much, it's like an overload. So the one thing that I found helps me a lot is this timer. I set it for 30 minutes. It's the Pomodoro technique. Set it for 30 minutes, get it going, right? And then in my mind, um, it's a race against the clock. So I'm able to artificially generate that sense of urgency that helps me tap into the focus that I need and the superpower that I need. And then when it's over, I take a little break, I'll play the drums, I'll go outside, I'll do something else and then come back, set another timer and keep working. That's how I'm able to maintain productivity without feeling like I'm killing myself just to focus on something. Okay. So it says to resolve the error and utilize the personal table component effectively in your project team component, we need to ensure that the data fetching process aligns with your Firestore structure and that all necessary data fields and conditions are correctly defined. Here's a step-by-step -step approach to potentially resolve the issues and improve your component. So first we need to verify the Firestore structure. Ensure that your Firestore data structure aligns with the queries you're attempting to execute. Specify that the tenant profiles collection group indeed exists and is structured as expected. It does. The projects field within tenant profiles properly contains the project ID as part of an array since you're using array contains. Ooh, that I do not know. So here's our, oh shit, my brother's calling me. Um, damn, I'm gonna have to call him back. Um, let me text him real quick. My bad, guys. Um, damn. Uh, let me tell him to shoot him a video real quick. I'm pretending like this is live, bro. Um, what after this, if I don't edit this out, I'm so sorry. But if not, you could just do a little, do a little skip a couple minutes. Um, my bad. Bro, shooting a video right now. I'll call you back in 15 minutes. Might be longer than that. Um, okay, here is our project. What was it saying? We need to verify that the tenant profiles, the projects field within the tenant profiles properly contains the project ID as part of an array. Right. So is projects i so here's user let's let's hop into us oh wait this is the wrong one goodness gracious let me let me get over here real quick make sure i'm not in those kind of sensitive info i need to click that and then i need to click this to get on the right project there we go all right so we got users tenant profiles now yeah, this is an array. Okay, so projects IDs are within an array. So we're good there. The projects field within tenant profiles properly contains the project ID as part of an array. Yep, within our tenant profile. I hope it knows that tenant profiles is a sub collection. This is the wrong one. Um, yeah, it's an array within a sub collection. Maybe I should say that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The project's ID. I'm looking at the project's ID and then I'm looking at what is this name here? Oh, that's for, yeah, where does that name come from? Is that oh, the work item name? Let me see, go back to work item. And so project ID is good, but where does that name come from? Tenant ID. Where do we get? I mean, I'm at least I'm seeing that we definitely have the correct project ID. I'm so confused on the um where that name is coming from though. 
actually is it that, that must be projects okay yeah that's what it is it's the name of the project okay but the project id is indeed this now yeah, yeah 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 that's right projects here's the project id okay cool 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 we're good we're good i can move on to the next thing here's the project id now but wait when we go over here and we go to project okay yeah so that's the name but it's it still knows it knows that that's the id and then it's referenced there too okay next next thing enhance error handling Modify your error handling to capture and display more detailed error message from Firestore. This will help diagnose the problem more effectively. True. So this will let us know fetch personnel error, set error, fail to first personnel error message will provide more. Okay, let's do that. Let's copy this error message um, so that you guys can see us implement it. Let me slide this over here into my thing that did not properly populate jeez that's gonna bother me come on bro why not all right whatever let's do it let's try it the side by side mode okay cool um close this and where what are we doing we're putting our um error message here catch error and this is for the project team component. <laughs> Adding more error to the error. Set error true. Catch error. Catch error. Fail to fetch personnel error. Oh, okay. So it's that the set error is what we're adding a little bit of sauce to. I'm just going to copy this and replace this here. We add in some extra error message and then now we got the TypeScript. I forget how to fix that, man. Message does not exist on type unknown. There's some way to fix that. Let me let me search my project to see how did I how did I deal with that in the past? Error.message. Okay, error maybe will show me. Catch error. Uh, geez, Louise. I gotta do it that way. Uh, let's just let's just ask ask the boss again. Um, for. See why you need to know your um see why you need to know your your shit and it would make it makes coding so much faster if I could just know like yo how do I I have a I have a type um error does not what was it saying? And this is just a TypeScript thing. It says property message does not exist on type unknown. I have a TypeScript error property message does not exist on type unknown at least at least this will show people how to do this you know what i mean like how you can use chat gpt to learn and and move forward with with shit you know time square property area is this type unknown how do i fix this um the thing is like yeah that that should be valuable right that we're basically showing people how to like after you finish your courses how to start building stuff and then use ChatGPT to help you not that it will do all the work you and obviously you're going to see that you still need to know how to do this stuff you know the typescript error you're encountering property message does not exist on type unknown it indicates that typescript does not recognize error variable as having a message property this happens because typescript can't interfere with the type of the error object to fix this you can explicitly specify the type of the error object or use type assertions to tell typescript what type of error should be here's how you do it so we're gonna have to change that to catch error any to specific specify any as a type constant error failed effect that okay so you have to basically do all of this fail to fetch personal data 
error as error databases and this will be the type of assertion so i wonder if i can just just grab that line or do i need to do the entire thing is my next question because they're adding a try okay in this code okay try well i'm going to try to just grab this and see if that works right here if not we're gonna have to do a little bit more oh it worked okay so that's all i had to do and i'm trying to remember you have to do what is that called when you put the dollar sign bro the dollar sign is the um what is that called what is that called when you put that dollar sign? What is that called when you put the dollar sign? Wham! Error as error. Is that dot message? What is the dollar sign? That's one thing that I'm becoming um, accustomed to doing is whenever I come to a point of confusion, I'm trying to clarify it. The dollar sign symbol is used as a placeholder or delimiter in a temp template literal. That's what it is in JavaScript and TypeScript. It used to denote where variable or expression should be interpolated within the string. Interpolated. In the expression that the dollar is not being used as a delimiter, for a template literal, but rather as part of the syntax for type assertion. Okay, here's how it works. Error as error is a type assertion indicating to TypeScript that error, error, error should be treated as an error type. Dot message asks the message property, and then a dollar sign symbol is not related to template. Okay, so it's not related to template literals. It's just part of the syntax. Okay, so that's just, okay, cool. That's a TypeScript thing. In this instance, it's a TypeScript thing, and this is the way that you do type assertions. So in this context, the dollar sign does not have any specific meaning other than just being part of the syntax. Okay, it's just it's just syntax. We can close that for now. Now that we fix this, we can try to remember what the hell we were doing. Where were we? Oh, we were. So we did. Okay, so we we just now um, we copy and pasted that code that they gave us is that what we did oh no we, ju we just fixed the error so if you ensure your fire store security rules allow for the queries you're making since you're querying a collection group confirm that the rules permit reading from tenant profiles based on the conditions tenant id and projects okay i'm gonna i'm gonna copy this since we need to now confirm that gonna open up another jippity and I'm going to switch it over to my code mentor. And I'm going to say this, which is I need to ensure that my Firestore security rules can do that. What better way to ensure that than to, to ask the boss himself, right? Grab my security rules. Can you help me ensure that my Firestore Security, oops, security, goodness, security rules. Um, ensure this, oh wait, I already said ensure. Make this query possible. <clears throat> it looks like you're setting up for project multi issues and suggestions. You mentioned a query collection group, but your current rules does not explicitly set permissions for a collection group query. Mm, Firestore. Dang, did we just find the issue here? We may have found the issue. Ensure that your Firestore security rules allow for the query you're making. Since you're querying a collection group, confirm that the rules permit. I thought that we, I mean, if the hook, if the context, if it's already there, but maybe, maybe not. Add console logs to the value of current dot user tenant and project ID just before the query. This ensures that your hook isn't working with undefined or incorrect values, which could cause the query to fail. Reusing your personal component. Yes, you can 
reuse the personal table component as long as the data structure personnel array as long as the data structure personnel array passed to it is consistent with the expected format ensure that the personnel array constructed from the Firestore query matches the expected props for the personal table which it does to maintain consistency and possibly reuse logic consider abstracting the personnel fetching logic to a custom hook similar to data fetching logic used in multiple places just make your code more dry don't repeat yourself and simplify maintenance okay i need to think about that for a second to maintain consistency and possibly abstract so if i take the personnel to a custom look oh i mean we do have a we have a personnel fetching hook already um test with static to ensure that the issue lies within the data fetching and not elsewhere like rendering logic personnel table temporarily replace your fetched personnel with static data true could do that implement more robust error monitoring using tools so they're saying here's the code adjustment that they propose and i want to look at my other one to see what's what's the difference going to be so here's my code and here's their proposed. Um, so it starts with the use effect hook. Async fetch personnel. Can we can we collapse this? I want to close that. <clears throat> Fetch personnel. Um, if it's not the current user, the tenant ID, or that you got the error missing console log, tenant ID, current user. Okay, so we put so they want to put a console console log here. I could that could be helpful. And then um set is loading true, undefined try const. Then we're querying the collection group in the database tenant profiles. The database tenant profiles. See that kind of, to me, that makes it seem like tenant profiles is not a sub collection, but a its own within the database. Where tenant ID equals current user dot tenant ID, where projects erase that. This actually might be wrong. Let me, make sure that this query is correct that's my next question because that to me this looks like this looks like tenant profiles is one of these main things here versus being a sub collection of the user document you know what i mean it's been 30 minutes already oh my gosh um Okay, let, let's see. I'm gonna try to wrap it up soon. I don't want this to be too long. All right, um, yeah, so I was gonna say, I'm trying, wait, 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 wait. I forgot about this, um, the rule proposal. I wanna keep that on that, on there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to that. Delete this and let's open up another one. I like to keep my, um, I like to keep my, I like to keep these things only thinking about one thing at a time. You know what I mean? That's how I end up with multiples like that. All right. I want to make sure this query is correct. The collection group, my tenant profiles is a sub collection on the user document with personnel uh information mapped within is this the right query for that case and i'm gonna send it my um types for reference here open up open up send it my types so that you could know further what I mean here's my types for reference that and then also have this wonky user.ts that could be helpful as well 
and while we're at it just to give further that's one thing that i learned that you always want to do when you're working with ChatGPT. you want to give it as much information as you can when you're asking it to understand something you can't really because with software development everything is so freaking so many variables um involved it always depends on well what about this well what if that so when i'm asking it something i always say oh and just so you know this is how the project is like i give it extra information maybe overkill sometimes but you know the query you've written is generally correct for searching within a collection group in firestore however there's a few considerations it's always a few considerations and improvements that might be relevant depending on the specific structure and permissions here how here's the query you provided this query will search across all documents within any collection or sub collection named tenant profiles okay cool where the tenant id matches the current user dot tenant id and the projects array contains the project's id this is assuming that the projects that projects is an array of project identifiers within each tenant profile project which it is ensure that your firebase rules allow this query okay that's the next question that's what we asked the other the other one security and permission blah 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 ensure that your firestore rules allow this query since collection group queries can potentially scan documents across multiple users it's important that your security rules are set up um to not only allow users to fetch data they are authorized to see you might need to use firestore security rules to check for the matching tenant id or other relevant conditions firestore requires specific indexes for queries involving multiple fields or conditions Make sure that you have an index that includes tenant ID and projects for this type of query. Firestore will prompt you to create one if it's missing when you run the first query. Since collection group queries can be more expensive in terms of read operations, consider whether this is the most effective query for your use case. If each user typically accesses only their own tenant profiles, it might be more efficient to structure your data or queries to avoid using collection group. Something to think about. Data structure. It sounds like tenant profiles is a sub collection under each user document. If every user only needs to access their own tenant profiles, you might not need. No, it's, it's not like that though, because we're going to need tenant profiles for every user. It's not just because even, even the freaking, if you're an admin and you click on our projects, we want to, we want to populate personnel in that way, which could be very expensive. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to note that down. Matter of fact, we need to look at that collection group thing for expensivity. Okay. Um, query performance, Cisco, blah blah blah. blah. Tenant profiles. Yup. The direct query assumes. So this is a direct. Wait, wait, wait since there's that um if each user typically it might be it sounds like your tenant profiles is a sub collection under each user document if they user you might not need a collection group which we do unfortunately this direct query assumes each user accesses only their own so no i don't we're not going to do a direct query because it's not just each user it's the entire page that we're trying to like populate I need to show the team on my project um on my I need to show my project team here right uh where are we where are we direct query I need to render a personnel table and show my entire team so I have to do collection group to get the personnel info due to the structure of our database which was not defined by me by the way um your react component for rendering okay so while they're thinking about that I'm gonna 
see what what we were talking about with our five star rules. Woo! <coughs> this is not doing the Pomodoro technique. Like I'm supposed to take a break every thirty minutes. I'm starting to feel that, and it's a way to avoid avoid burnout as a way. So we might have to have to make a part two of this. I mean, I'm gonna keep working on it, and I, I think that you guys are able to see the flow there though. But I want y'all to see the yes when I figure it out in the end. So I'm gonna keep going because I feel like we're getting close. It looks like you're setting up Firestar security rules for a project with multi-tenant architecture. To ensure that your Firestar queries are allowed by the security rules, especially for querying tenant profiles collection group based on tenant ID and projects, we need to ensure that the rules are correctly structured and match your requirements. Collection group query access. You mentioned querying a collection group. Your current rules do not explicitly explicitly set permissions for a collection group query. Firestore requires that collection group queries have an appropriate rule that match all documents within the collection group. So that's gotta be the problem there. At least we found it, right? Uh. Role-based access control. Your function is tenant admin checks if the user is an admin of the specified tenant, which is great. However, it uses user doc tenant IDs has any tenant ID, which is to suggest that a user might belong to multiple tenant. If tenant IDs is an array, that approach is valid. Tenant IDs is an array. Ain't it? Yep. Tenant IDs is an array for sure. Oops. Read act. The rules for tenant profiles seem to be nested under users UID, which implies that tenant profiles are a subcollection under each user document. If tenant profiles is a collection group that spans multiple tenants, tenant profiles is a collection group that spans multiple tenants or users. The current rule may be too restrictive or improperly scoped. Wait a minute. If, okay, the rules for tenant profiles seem to be missing under users.user ID, which implies that tenant profiles. Yes, it is a subcollection under each user. If tenant profiles is a collection group that spans multiple tenants, tenant profiles is a collection. No, 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 it's not. There's gonna be multiple tenant profiles per. Okay, I'm gonna have to like mention that and say, just to clarify. To answer this and clarify, Tenant Profiles is indeed a sub-collection under the user document. And it shouldn't say Profiles with an S. It should just be Profile, right? Wait, Tenant, User, oh, it is Tenant Profiles. And then once you click, oh, once you click that, each, okay. Let's just go ahead and show, man. Let's show. Screenshot that, and then we're gonna say, we're gonna send that screenshot, and we're gonna say, tenant profiles is indeed a sub collection under the user document, and each um, tenant ID is the ID <laughs> of each. Um, tenant profiles uh, sub collect uh, of each uh, fuck of each tenant profile within the sub collection of tenant profiles it's an array per uh, it's it's an array of tenant profiles per each user where the tenant ID is our way of having multiple tenants per user. I feel like I'm butchering this, I'm sorry. Um, and then each uh, tenant profile has a personnel map with all of it's really it's uh information related to that tenant right okay so we're gonna say that just to clarify 
Now let's look at the revised rule proposal. If tenant profiles is meant to be a collection group query across multiple user documents, I don't, I mean, I guess, like, how do you know? The security rule should be profound. Okay, I just wanna clarify first. Um, knowing this, does that mean that it should be a collection group query spanning multiple users for tenant profiles? because I do need to read all tenant profiles and get the personnel information to populate the personnel table or project team in information. I'm unsure if collection group is the right way is the right way to do that with all things considered. I might, I may be get talking too much to ChatGPT, like, can it understand that? Oh, maybe it said, thank you. Thank you for the detailed explanation and screenshot, which clarifies, so, so see what I mean? That's why you wanna just, you wanna just give it as much as you can, right? Thank you for the detailed explanation and screenshot, which clarifies that the structure of your Firestore data Given your description, here are some key points and recommendations for setting up your Firestore security rules correctly. Tenant profiles as a sub Each user document has a subcollection named tenant profiles, where each document represents a tenant profile with a unique tenant ID. Mm-hmm. Right. Tenant profiles in each user document has a subcollection named tenant profiles, where each document represents a tenant profile with a unique tenant ID. Yes, technically. I don't know if it's, if it's that unique because we're using it in multiple places, but yeah. Each tenant profile document contains personnel information necessary for populating personal tables or project teams. Yes. So you need to read across multiple tenant profiles under different users to gather personal information. Yes. Given your requirements, here are some considerations. Since tenant profiles are stored as subcollections under each user document, querying across multiple user subcollections is complex, complex and would typically necess necess necessitate a collection group. However, collection group queries across all collections of the same name across the database, which might include unintended data if not properly secured. A collection group would be suitable if you need to query tenant profiles across all users without specifying the user context in the query. Using a collection group increases the complexity of your security rules because you must ensure only authorized users can access data across the entire database, right? If using direct subcollection queries, your current setup requires knowledge of the user ID to query a specific user's tenant profiles, which naturally limits across access to the context of a single user. If they're, if using direct subcluster queries, your, setup, your current setup requires knowledge of the user ID to query a specific users, which naturally limits, right? Given your need to access multiple tenant profiles for different users, if you intend to keep a structure and need cross user queries, consider setting up a collection group Here's how you can modify your security rules to securely implement a connection, a collection group while ensuring only authorized access. Okay. So I would need to do collection group for tenant profiles, match tenant profiles, profile ID. Ensure the querying user is an admin and belongs to the tenant they are querying. Now, do I only want admin to be able to see that? Is the next thing, bro. Individual users. Ensure that the user is an admin. Hmm. Is everybody gonna wanna see that or do we only want admin seeing that? That's a legitimate question. Cause let's see. Say, Anyone just hits project team, right? Do we only want admin seeing the whole team? Maybe only just the um only the personnel 
needs to see themselves versus like you would maybe you don't need to see the whole the whole everyone if you're not an admin and people would only need to see stuff related to them hmm we'll write that down admin okay um individual users tenant profile access allow read write if request is not no individual users tenant I already have that in in my rules okay the collection group rule for tenant profiles should ensure that only users who are admins of the relevant tenant can read the data test thoroughly always ensure that the firebase console rules paragraphs are right Make sure to index your tenant profiles as a collection group in the Firebase console to ensure to enable collection group queries. It's a how do you make it a collection group? Isn't that what this is? Start collection. Isn't that what this is? Or is this just a sub collection? How do you make a collection group in here? Hmm. What is the difference between a collection group and a subcollection? In Firebase Firestore, the distinction between a collection group and a subcollection is an important concept to grasp, especially when structuring your database and defining security rules. Okay, a subcollection is a collection that is nested within a document of another collection. The hier hier hierarchy, hierarchical structure allows you to organize related data more effective, efficiently under a parent document. Subcollections help in logically grouping data that only makes sense under a parent document and can vary independently of the parent's collections schema. Subcollections is scoped to a parent document. A subcollection exists within Oh, within a specific document, making it contextual to the doc. So instead of separate, it would be rate, rate on it. Subcollections can be queried independently of the parent documents. However, queries to subcollections do not automatically include data from the parent. Okay. Deeply nested. You can nest subcollections deeply, such as a subcollection within another subcollection, allowing complex data hierarchies. Oh. Hmm not included in parent collection queries. When you query the parent collection, it does not return documents from its subcollection. Mm. Okay. Scope to the parent. Independent queries, it can be queried independently of the parents, but it doesn't automatic, okay, it doesn't automatically include the data from the parent. Interesting. A collection group consists of all collections within the same ID. This group can span multiple documents and even multiple levels of subcollections, allowing you to query across different collections that share the same name regardless of their location in the database hierarchy. So you can get cross document queries. A collection group query retrieves documents from every collection or subcollection within the same collection ID across the entire database. This is useful when the same type of data is scattered across many different documents or levels of the database. Requires indexing. To use collection group queries, Firestore requires you to explicitly create indexes for the queries, which can impact performance and storage. Useful for uniform data structure. If you have a repeating pattern in your data across many parts of your database, collection groups provide an efficient way to access the data without knowing the path to each collection. Hmm. When designing your database access patterns and virus, use subcollections when the data is tightly coupled to a parent document, which it is, and there's no need to query the data across multiple parent documents. Hmm. So our, it's definitely tightly coupled, but there is a need to query across multiple parent documents. Use collection groups when you need to perform queries across many 
collections or sub-collections that share the same structure but are distributed across different parts of the database. Understanding these differences is crucial for effective structuring your data in Firestore and setting appropriate security rules to protect the data based on how it's accessed across inquiry. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to figure out what is the proper way to do this in relation to the um, project team component. It's so crazy how like fast times goes by when you're locked in and you're working on this stuff, man. I can't believe that was already an hour. I feel like we didn't get anything done, honestly, but we did. And I got three different GPTs to read over looking at the code and trying to get this thing to work, man. I really wish that we could have got our project team to display here but I do feel like made some serious progress also learned important things related to the project so we're going to um continue working but I don't want to um tie you guys up <laughs> any longer because I don't like to edit my videos I just like to put them out there so I'm probably not going to edit this I'm just going to throw some music and some um subtitles and just go ahead and post it and i'm going to um take a little break as well which is something that i don't usually like doing while i'm live as well that's why i figured i should do this instead of go live but um thank you guys for watching if you made it to the end bro thank you you know what i mean that's crazy and please like share subscribe if you know how to properly do what i'm trying to do please reach out to me all of my links are in the description join the discord join the school holla at me and i'll see you guys next time peace